Okay, so this thing arrived when I was on holiday. So this is a EVQWGD001 scroll encoder. Uh, it's basically the same thing as an EC11 rotary encoder, which are on most keyboards, but this thing rotates horizontally. This makes it easy to rotate it like a mouse wheel with a single finger, uh, compared to having to pinch the knob with two fingers. I've added a rotary encoder on my right side of the keyboard a few months ago, uh, but to be honest, I find it not so useful because I have to lift my whole palm to rotate the encoder. But plus, it wasn't fixed correctly on the keyboard, so it was wobbly as heck. So first thing to do is to disassemble the keyboard to have the switch plate removed. So as you can see, the scroll encoder doesn't fit into the switch hole because it's about 16 millimeters long and the switch hole is 14 millimeters on each side. So I brought my Dremel out and sanded away the extra two millimeters off the plate and then try to wedge the thing in. And now, yeah, it's nicely wedged. So once done, then I added another scroller because I wanted a thumb scroller so I could scroll left and right. And I also wanted a cool way to alt tab through apps. So this is me sanding off the other hole. And by the way, did you know that the average raccoon can... And then wedge the second scroller into the plate. Wedging the scrollers into place would still have a chance of the scrollers popping out when it's pushed with some force, so I glued the scrollers to the plate using a glue gun. The drawback of doing this is the scrollers will be there as a permanent fixture, but I don't care that much, so that's that. And now it's time to remove this useless knob. And get this out of the way. And then rewire the same wires to the scroller. The pins on the scroller are kind of straightforward, uh, the two pins here are for a key press, which I soldered them to a hot swap socket. And the first three pins on the side are the ground, the A pin, and the B pin. Try to connect it once and try to see if the first scroller works. And it looks good. Now do the same thing to the second scroller. But this time, connect the pins to different pins on the Pro Microcontroller. I had the first scroller connected to F4, F5 and ground pins here, while the second scroller was connected to ground, D1 and D0 over here. I didn't solder the key press pins for the second one because I think the press on the second scroller was too weak to do and I couldn't see a use case for it. So that's done! And now comes the fun part of spending a few hours troubleshooting QMK on why the hell the second scroller wouldn't work. So long story short, the first thing was the encoder's write definitions in the config file didn't work for some reason. Uh, maybe I was using an old QMK version, I don't know. So I eventually used the two encoder matrix that applies to both sides. Second thing was the indexing in the key map file works like uh, encoder 1, 2 on left side and encoder 1, 2 on right side. So I needed to put in a dummy encoder into the key map for the second non-existent encoder. Third thing was it was better to write the encoder tap codes for each layer instead of writing the layers for each encoder. So yeah, I actually don't know if this means anything or not. So once that's done, uh, flash the thing and do some testing and enjoy the side scrolling action on this thing yeah and once that's done wire tape the connectors so there's no shortage reassemble the thing and that's it so that's my story of adding scrolling quarters to my lily 58 pro uh thanks for watching